What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic and I'm starting up a, a little bit of a mini series, I'm gonna call it. I've done a lot of different logic things and a lot of different creations. Um, most recently using logic to create a fuel cell sort of car and a lot of the time I try and explain as best I can uh, what I'm doing with all these logic gates here. A lot of people have been asking me time and time again to do uh, just some basic tutorials. So I'm going to start this series at the most basic of logic gates, really with what the six logic gates are in Scrap Mechanic. Also looking at, uh, you know, some, some basic examples with what we can do with just the initial logic gates plus the timer. But as we move through the series, I, I'm going to look at doing uh, some more advanced functions that really help make your creations just that much, uh, you know, better and uh, more automated, let's say. So make sure if you guys at any point in time during this video, if you do have questions, make sure you post those in the comments down below. I will try and get to as many of those as I can. And uh, of course, then move into the next set of videos. And I know a lot of people right off the bat are, uh, are probably already gonna know a lot of this information. And a lot of people are gonna say, well, there's other ways to do the same thing. And that's true. In logic, there's many different ways to do many different things and uh, there's many different ways to do the same thing even and if at any point in time you disagree with what I'm saying let me know in the comments down below uh, I'm only merely posting the ways I do things and I'll, I'll try and show a few variants that uh, I've heard other people do I am going to show how I do things and how I accomplish what I want to do in scrap mechanic a little while back the scrap mechanic devs added the uh, logic block and the timer into the game now there were ways to do logical circuits before and you could use controllers and sensors to recreate all the same gates that you would have in a in a logic block but the logic blocks of course added less time delay within all your circuits plus they added the ability to make much more complex circuits in much more compact a space and so really you know allowed for the creation of vehicles with all sorts of advanced functions built into them the logic block gives us a selection between you know three gates basic gates and three inverted gates which is the AND gate the OR gate and the XOR gate and then the NAND gate the NOR gate and the XNOR gate now in real life, there's also another gate, which is the NOT gate, and uh, the NOT gate you can basically create using the NOR gate. Those six gates allow you to do whatever you want in, in Scrap Mechanic and in any sort of logical system. You could go as advanced as trying to build a simple computer with those gates, but uh, it would be massive just to make a really, really simple computer. You would need a ton of gates. Um, if you don't believe me, there's a few different like calculators and advanced logic games on the workshop. And uh, even my battleship game uses thousands of logic gates. So it, it does get very complex very quickly. The easiest thing to start with is probably the timer. The timer in Scrap Mechanic really allows you to do all sorts of different things with logic, which we'll get into in, in later episodes. But really the timer allows you to control the time between zero and 60 seconds. And uh, with this, we can actually store information slightly. So for example, if we set a 10 second timer and we hook this up to a switch, right this timer then can go to a light and the light is off but we can now create sort of some pulses right and we're just we're creating like little gaps in the time sequence and the light will actually follow that time sequence so it's kind of interesting the way that scrap mechanic did that with the timer it's really just one of the most uh basic blocks that's really helpful there's six different logic gates in scrap mechanic and uh the first gate that you come across on the left side is an and gate and an AND gate is actually really quite a simple a simple system. So we could have, let's say, three different switches here all hooked into the same gate. And then we can have this gate going into a light just for a little bit of a visual cue. Right? And so that light's off no matter what. And if we turn on one switch, it won't do anything. We turn on two switches, it won't do anything. And the AND gate only satisfies the condition if all three switches are lit up. Right, and so that really allows us to do all sorts of, of crazy things. For example, if let's say we want a button that will only activate after a certain amount of time, we can do a simple system like this. And we have a one second timer and we have the switch. So now the gate won't light up until the switch, the timer has been turned on for one second. But when we turn off the switch, it'll instantly turn off even though the timer still has that one second charge in it. Just a really simple gate to allow you to do all sorts of things. Or for example, if you want to make a really basic combination lock, if you hide the circuits here, then people would have to know that, you know, all three of these have to be lit up and uh, this one, we can we can put this one through a not gate like so, right? And so it has to be off otherwise, right? We've broken the combination. So 
So some simple stuff that we can do there with an AND gate. The next most basic gate, which is pretty much used 99% of the time for just about everything you want to do, is the OR gate. Uh, the AND gate is good if you want to have multiple inputs. The OR gate is good if you want to have either input. So the OR gate works on either system or both. It really doesn't matter. So either button will light up that gate. Same sense if I turn a switch on. This switch will keep the gate lit up no matter what I do with these other buttons, right? And so you can have infinite number of inputs. When you're doing uh, co-pilot controls, for example, in a plane, the OR gate is super, super useful. Let's say I've got thrusters that I want to be controlled by either the left pilot or the right pilot. We just hook both of those controls into an OR gate, and uh, and that gives us the ability to just, no matter what, have that, have that system on. If we look at the exclusive OR gate, uh, it's it's used for switches. So if we have an OR gate and we're making co-pilot controls, the, the really basic way to do any sort of dual control system where you want two people to be able to control the same thing is to have these two combinations. So if you're doing a, a button setup, like you want to have a, a roll or a pitch button or something like I do on my planes, you hook the buttons both into an OR gate. And no matter which person is holding the button, it will light up that that system. But if you want both people to have a switch to be able to toggle on and off, then you have to put both switches into an exclusive OR gate. So an exclusive OR gate basically says one or the other, but not both. And if you have one switch on, it will toggle the exclusive OR gate on. If you turn on the other switch, it will toggle it off. If you turn this switch off again, it will toggle it back on because only this one is on. And if you turn that off again, it will toggle it off. So how this would work with something, let's say uh, a landing gear on a plane. And again, I use planes for these two examples because these are, this is really in, in all the co-pilot controls, it's very, very simple uh, to make co-pilot controls. So right now our plane landing gear would be retracted, right? And either of these buttons would be for one for the pilot seat and one would be the co-pilot. So let's say I'm the pilot and I say, okay, I wanna extend the landing gear. So I hit that switch and now my landing gear has been extended. And if I'm the co-pilot and I say, oh no, I need to retract the landing gear, I can hit that switch. Same sense if I'm the pilot, I could hit that switch again to retract them. And no matter who hits the button, it will always just switch between the two positions. I can hit the same one over and over again, or I can hit the other one over and over again. And no matter what, it will always act as a toggle gate. So that really allows uh, for dual control setups. And then again, of course, using the button on the other side of it, where either one of them, oh, okay, well, we can just do that. Either one of them, right, can hold it. So just really a really simple and uh, useful gate. And the combination of the XOR and the OR gate will really allow you to make any vehicle you want multi-controlled. Anywhere you have a switch, you replace it with an XOR gate and have two switches going to that XOR gate. And anywhere where you have a button, you put an OR gate and you have two buttons going to that OR gate. So on the other side of the spectrum, we have the inverted versions of these gates. So we have a NAND gate, we have a NOR gate, and we have an XNOR gate. Now, I will say right off the bat, Having these gates is the exact same as doing this. So this is an OR gate, and, and we'll we'll set that up and we'll show you real quick what I'm talking about. So this is an OR gate and this is a or this is a NAND gate, sorry. It's a it's a AND gate going to a NOR gate. And a NOR gate basically means uh, not one or the other. And so having it hooked into a single gate makes it act like a knot. So an AND gate is the exact opposite of an AND gate. So an AND gate says that both inputs have to be on for it to activate, whereas a NAND gate says either one of them has to be off. So if we have two of them hooked in, even if I turn this switch on, that AND gate stays lit up. And as soon as I turn this one on, then as soon as both of them are on, the NAND gate turns off. Same sense if I have three switches, you know, it'll do the same thing. But no matter what, as soon as any one of the switches or buttons or whatever that's connected in, if we connect a button in, for example, you know, now we have a system where we have to activate all five switches and the button before it'll actually turn off that gate. We can recreate this with this OR gate. So if we look at, let's hook up two buttons here, just to say, or two switches here, and let's look at the same case. So that NOR gate is lit up, that NAND gate is lit up. They're still both lit up. Now they're both off, both on. And so you can see it's literally the opposite of an AND gate. Uh, again, not really, if, if you want to do it with the circuit, you can do it either this way or this way. This just saves you the extra logic block and it saves you the extra tick of calculation time.
You have the set of gates, we've got the Norgate, and uh, well, this would be the same as the Orgate with the Norgate hooked into it, obviously, because it's a Norgate and a Norgate. But the Norgate is really the most useful uh, of, of the gates, I find. It's one of the ways to make memory, and uh, it allows you to do all the inverted conditions for pretty much anything. For example, if I have a switch, and I start my vehicle on the creation, and I want the switch to always give me an on input, I hook my switch into a Norgate. Now the switch is in the off position, but I have a logic output. Same sense, as soon as I turn on the switch, it flitch, flips that output. If we hook two switches into a NOR gate, it's the same thing. If either switch is on, the gate is off. Same sense, two switches and a button even. As soon as we press the button, it goes off. But if we have a switch on, it's always off, no matter what we do with the button. So the NOR gate, really, really useful. Um, if you have, for example, landing gear that you want to start deployed, you can have a switch hooked into a, a NOR gate and have the NOR gate go straight to a controller and activate the controller. I mean, you could have an initial position on the controller as well, but uh, this allows you another way to do that. If you have any circuits like thrusters or whatever that you want to be activated as soon as you start the creation, you can have a NOR gate. Uh, same sense, if we want a logic input that's just always on no matter what, we can just take an empty gate and hook it into the NOR gate. And now no matter what, if we take this entire thing and put it on a lift, as soon as it comes off the lift, that NOR gate is on by default and we could have all sorts of stuff like lights, for example, that are always lit up, right? And we could have this, so lights start lit up on the creation, but there's still a switch that can turn them all off. The final gate is the XNOR gate, and uh, the XNOR gate is really the same thing as the XOR and the NOR gate, just like before. So the XOR gate is one or the other, but not both, and the XNOR gate is either both or none. So right now we have neither of the two switches on, so our XNOR gate is lit. Same sense, neither of these two switches on, so our XOR is off, but our NOR gate is lit. If we turn on one of the switches, you can see there the X or the X NOR, sorry, turns off. The X OR turns on, which turns off the NOR. Turn on both though, the X OR turns off, the NOR comes back on, and same sense with the X NOR. So just a very uh, a very useful one if you want to have a system where both people have to be in agreement, for example. So, anyways, guys, that was the first little logic tutorial uh, in in scrap mechanic. If you have any questions, make sure you post them in the comments down below. Obviously, this is a very basic tutorial, but uh, I really wanted to start at the beginning for the first one and just kind of get people into logic and how it works. And, uh, and then we'll get into some more advanced functions in the next tutorial. So let me know if you have any specific type of functions that you want to see or any specific things that you want to do. I will try and start with uh, more basic concepts and work into the more advanced concepts, of course. Let me know what you want to do in the comments down below. Make sure you hit that like button as well and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time.